Hello guys, in today's tutorial we're going to begin a series of 5 or 6 tutorials where we'll be cloning a game called Infinity Loops. Um, you might have already played it online as a flash game called Loops of Zen, but now there's a, popul a popular version of it for Android called Infinity Loops as well, so we'll be doing that. Uh, and by the way, the, the link for the clone that I made is on the description, so go check it out. And without further ado, I'm going to create here a new project. I'll call it Loops Tutorial. Make it 2D. And let's create a project. Now, uh, in case you don't know, the this game that we're going to do only has five sprites. And which are those over here. Those being the line which has two exits, the end which has one exit, the cross which has four exits, the corner which has two ends, the freeway, three ends, and there is also the no piece which has zero ends, but that's we don't need the sprite for that. And in this tutorial we're going to make a way to rotate these pieces. So first let's create here a new game object. This is a line, and I'm going to make give it a color maybe blue, I like blue like so and I'm going to make the background of a black color like that and as you can see this line here occupies exactly one unit because I made them 100 by 100 pixels and because in here it says 100 pixels is one unit so they are one unit so let's create a script, the piece script, where we'll be rotating the pieces. And what we want to do is whenever the player clicks on the piece, we want to rotate the piece. So what we want to do is on, on mouse down, and there are several ways to rotate something. 90 degrees at a time. The way I'm going to do it is by creating here an int is a float called real rotation. There you go. And whenever we put on mouse down, I make real rotation plus equals 90. So it will rotate 90 degrees. But this this itself won't do nothing. What we want to do is to change the transform.rotation. So let's make transform.rotation which is the rotation of the object to be equal to a quaternion dot Euler and we have to do this because transform.rotation is a quaternion and this function over here Euler converts an, an Euler angle into a quaternion angle so an Euler angle it's basically these three coordinates that are over here and here on the Z we put real rotation there you go and just like that hopefully it will turn and let's see of course for us to be able to click it we must first add a, a collider to it so I'm going to add a box collider like that and now if I play and I press on that collider you'll see that the piece will rotate as you can see the piece is rotating but of course unity and the code doesn't understand What's the position of the the piece? It doesn't know where is an exit and where is an end. So now we have to code that. And the way that we're going to do that is by attributing to each side of the piece either a zero or a one. A zero if it's a if it has no exit on that side. Uh, a one if it has an exit, and that's basically it. It will have four sides, and each of these numbers will be in an array. And every time we rotate the piece, those numbers should rotate with the piece as well. So first we're going to create here the the array for that, the array for these numbers, and then make them rotate whenever the piece rotates. So back in our script, let's create for the piece a public int array array called values or anything else and save it 
and of course we'll have to then attribute the values individually for each piece but we'll do that in a second so now for instance we want this to have four sides and we're going to use clockwise notation you can use whatever you want I just use this because it's what I know and it's simple to remember so on the top in, in clockwise notation is zero means top one right two bottom three left so it's just like a clock up right down left so on the top side we have an exit so we put here one on the right side there is no exit so we leave it at zero on the bottom we have an exit so one and on the right on the left there's a zero there's no exit so we put there zero so now we have that done and now whenever we rotate the piece we also want to rotate the values because for unity to detect that the piece has been moved we have to rotate the values itself so I'm going to, here, to make here a function call to rotate values like so and here I'm going to call to make that function public void rotate values I'm making this function public because we might have to use it in another script and in this function what we're going to do is uh, first let me show you here with another piece because this isn't really good example so with the corner and let's make let's call this the corner and with the corner and by the way let me just change these values real quickly so up is zero right one bottom zero one and left zero so with this piece as you can see the, the these values this exit moves up and this exit moves moves to the right meaning the value that is on one should go to zero and the value that is on two should go to one just like that so let's program that in the rotate values function so we'll be using a loop for int i equals to zero until it's smaller than the values dot length and increase it we want to increase it one by one then we want the values i to be equal to the values that is on on i plus one so say this goes first to zero so the value that is on zero is now the value on one then this goes to one the value that is on one should be the value on two and and that's basically it but there's a problem right now for instance the, for the value 3 if the value is 3 then we we would go to access the value 4 and what we really want is to access to put there the value that is on the 0 so first to, to stop that from going to the value 3 on this loop put here minus 1 this way for this loop to happen it has to be lower than the length dot minus 1 now to, to make the value on 3 be equal to the value on 0 we have to do this equal but we, we can't just put here the value on 1 because we just changed it he, in here so I'll just create here a temporary variable you can even call it auxiliary where we make the value on 0 and then here because we saved it we can now do this and save and just like that you'll see that the values will be rotating so right now it's on 110110 if I click 1100 which is correct just like this we have, we have a 1 on the top and 1 on the left correct and that's basically it now we're not done of course this is a bit uh, clunky we want them to rotate smoothly so we're going to do that now and to do that I'm going to first move this into a function called void uh, rotate piece where I do exactly this and let's call here the rotate piece function now because we want this the rotation to go smoothly we can just make the rotation equal to something so we'll be updating the rotation on the update function in here uh, I'm just going to do a little thing that will help us in the future which is 
whenever the rotation, the real rotation is equal to 360, meaning it has gone full circle, so it goes full circle, then instead of being 360, it will go back to zero again. So if real rotation equals 360, then the real rotation equals to zero. Okay, now to make the smooth, the smooth animation. So, on the update function, what you want to do is, if this z value is not equal to the ro real rotation, which is the rotation that the object should go to, then we want to make it go to that rotation. So, if the transform dot rotation dot Euler angles dot z, which is that exact value that I was talking about is different from the real rotation then what you want to do is to make the transform dot rotation be equal to quaternion dot lerp which is one of those that smoothly interpolates between two values and as you can see this receives two quaternions and a float and the first is the where, where it is right now, and it is the piece is on the, its transform dot rotation, and we want it to go to a rotation that is zero zero, and then the real rotation here, so whatever the real rotation is. So to make that, because we have to put here a quaternion with quaternion dot Euler, and now here we give the free coordinates of that vector, so zero on the x, zero on the y and the real rotation on the z and then we need to put here a speed and for that I'm going to put here a public float speed like that and speed over here and I just noticed that I've got this here this should be this one and let's it build here change the speed to something different from 0 so maybe 0.3 and let's check how this is working so if I hit play and I click as you can see now the piece goes smoothly just because of that thing and that's basically it uh, now what's left for us to do in this tutorial is to create prefabs for every one of these pieces and for the null piece as well so we've got already the corner done I'm going to drag it over here the line is also done, the speed, we should just change the speed to the same as the corner and drag it over here as well and then we can just delete this one, name this one the, for instance, the cross drag its cross and make a new prefab and we also need this for the for the freeway so here change its sprite and name it give it a different name put it here now for the end and there you go name it end and put it in here and also we're going to do for the null sprite so put here null and just remove the sprite render and drag that into here and just to organize stuff I'm going to put this on a folder called pieces and I'll put all of that in there oh and before we end this tutorial make sure that this has the correct values I actually forgot to, to change them so for instance this is, should be 1110 so 1110 this is correct 0110 it should be all ones because it's a cross this should be uh, 0 0 1 0 so 0 0 1 0 there you go the line it's already done and the null should be 0 on every value and that's it for today guys in the next tutorial we're going to make a map for this piece thank you for watching and see you in the next tutorial